reliable source. He actually did this to this guy, Man, and I'm not, I'm not going to give up my source no matter what. You could put a Leo gun to my head. I will not give up my source. John asked people for big super chats to stick it to Shuley. And then if you do it, he'll ask you the next day, can you do it again? This is what this guy, this is the guy who, who's Capital One is like, John, you're tipping too much. This guy literally is begging other men. I'm just talking about Stutter John. He's begging other men to send him super chats. And then if you're, I guess, nice enough or ridiculous enough or naive enough to do it, then he'll go back to the well again the next day or two he's days later. Hey, can you do that he's again? Though. That you know, he felt don't need real it. good. That felt real and good when him you did that. He complained, that not felt enough. real fucking sweet. He's a and this is this is uh this is what Rob saw. Rob Saul doesn't get paid anything at John um Stuttering John show. Yet he wants me to pay him? I mean, uh, Rob Saul is so dumb. Though I think the last time he was on my show, he did Stuttering John show that night. So at least wait till I pay you. At least give me twenty four hours to pay you, and then go. All right, I guess it's not going to pay me. I can do. But Rob Saul is such a loser, and he's so dumb. And again, I didn't know people lost this big. Seventeen people watching last night. Seventeen. And now that Stuttering John. Is not traveling cross country anymore. His views are down. His money's down. He's panicking. He's literally asking people to send him big super chats. Uh, not on his show. Before the show starts. Hey, I'm going live. It's like the Ray DeVito thing uh, times two. Ray's like, hey, I'm going live. Can you, can you watch? Can you do that again? And this is what we're dealing with. And this is this is the only reason I went live is because. I saw your options. I felt bad for you. You had Stuttering John and Rob Saul today or the Blunder Years free preview. Free preview? It's been up for, you've been doing that show for years. The I said, you don't have to pay me. Um, I don't? That's nice. I know because you bring a lot to the show. It says that you don't have to pay me. They they never say that. And even if they say it, like right away, it's like, hey, can you pay me anyway? Um, for Kevin, and then I did John's show, and he he cut me off. He didn't pay. Me. I'll come on today. I said you don't have to pay me. Right, but then when they get on, they're like, "Hey, can you pay me anyway?" Hey, I don't not pay child support. And his wife was like, "We don't care. We just don't. We just want you out of our lives." He just didn't pay me that time, and I was like, "Something's up." And then I yeah, because you went on John's show that night. You're that's how dumb you are. I mean, you're you think John really wanted you? No, John's like. I'll have Rob Saul on and to stick it to John's Brennan. I won't pay him. And Brennan will. I did it, John. How do you feel now? Rob Saul, you got the Rob Saul bump of 17. I heard, you know, Rob Saul's a loser, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you he are, did. Rob, by any definition, by any standard, you're a loser. Ask anybody in your life. Ask anybody here. Ask anybody in the Dabbleverse. You're, 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 like I said, you're like when you step on shit, you're like, I'm. Oh. Um, Rob Saul just sits there. Like, I wasn't on there when he showed a picture of. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. And surely I get dragged through the mud. You get dragged through the mud. Some, somebody sent me a message and they go, All he talks about is you and Kevin. And I'm going, yeah. Who the fuck is Kevin? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> So, all right, let's talk about this. They start off, John's talking about he had a date the night before. He's down in Florida. He had a date the night before with a 60-year-old woman. I don't know what happened to that uh, Viet Vietnamese girlfriend he had. Remember that? Yeah. That was short-lived. He was all proud of himself. <laughs> <laughs> was that the science than, teacher? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Other than a 90-year-old, who's bragging about a hot date with a 60-year-old? <laughs> right. I mean? that, well, then, <laughs> she's taking him to the Paul McCartney show the next night. Oh, yeah. So he's all proud of that, too. Which, whatever. <laughs> whole thing. All right. So um, let's talk about the fact that someone like me would have such an obsession with the stuttering <laughs> job. And I will well, say, Luna, have you ever seen such a 
scary obsession with one person in your life? I don't really understand the obsession with you. I, well, <laughs> some parts of me do, okay? I, I, mean, I, I know I'm good looking. I know that. I, mean, I gotta tell you, there's a good. curious... People left. Um, Could it be jilted lovers? No, I think it's more the... They're waiting to see you crash and fucking burn. I mean, like, yeah. there's this genuine. You're like, you're like the car swerving on the wrong side of the track. Laughing at the inept retard. Epic. and everybody's stopping to wait and see. With dreams of grandeur, he's nuts. When you fucking do a head-on collision with a tractor, but that's will. You know All right, I want to point out. Have you ever seen someone obsessed with someone like this? Monique's entire career is based on the Howard Stern show, and Howard Stern specifically, she does a show every week about Howard Stern. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I don't they, get it either, John. I don't know. These people are obsessed. That's why you're there. <laughs> the yeah, they, they are human GPS for everything Howard's life is attached to. Like, they know where his daughters live. They yeah. know what they do. They know, you know, it's it's psychotic. And so all three of the interviews that John's done with Tommy, I have been in communication with him. We've texted together. We've emailed together. Me too. He's not me expressed too. that he's upset with me in any way. So I'm, I'm curious if this is true or not. He seems to be threatening me. He's it's telling a trade gen horse. We're sending him in. It's gonna, that's how we're going to... You know, so I, I think that number is bigger. But even then, he's... Oh, I'm 0.09% of, of those my fame. I had no fucking idea who Stuttering John was until I started listening to this show. Right, and you're right that it is more people than that because you have to subscribe to it. A lot of people go on there and... His assistant, I go, what happened? Congress not in session? She goes, no. Well, on the schedule, I have it on my phone. It says they're in session. No, and she goes, stupid. yeah, they canceled it last... They canceled it last minute. I have her on tape saying this. That's amazing. Yes. So <laughs> Everything John it's does. Not my, it's not for my lack of planning. It's for just... Everything you do, John, does not work. And lack of planning is... Being kind, you're a delirious moron, drunky, total freaking bad luck. Mm, ew. This mm. is. Did you see that spit? The spit. It was like a fucking. <laughs> we uh, live in Western New York near Niagara Falls. The only bad luck is anyone standing next to him when he talks. Now that's bad. Says that. Oh yeah, Shuli was booked to this club one time, and he'll never be booked again. And he Thank didn't. God. He didn't what elaborate on that, and I'm like. Well, is it because he didn't have a good turnout? Because are you going to get booked there again? Like, well, what? Uh, you don't really have a place to brag on this one. First of all, it's not a comedy club. It's not the. It's not the comedy store. It's not the comedy cellar. It's the Boca Black Box. Yeah. It's going to be gone in a year. Purple showed like, me a photo from this place, and you're right. It's set up like a theater. It's a comedy club, yeah. but it's not like tables and chairs. It's like set up like a, it's horrible. It's not a good venue. It's where shitty improv lives. Yes. That's that's what the Boca Black Box does. All right, Shuli, get ready, because uh, they got some things about what an asshole you are. Oh, got to get your reaction to this. But I will tell you this. Shuli, now, uh -huh. here's, now here's a real asshole, because Shuli tweeted out, John, Howard told you to abort your kid. Uh, you should have listened. This is his snot machine, gurgler. To him, and 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 you shouldn't have aborted all of them. I have the screenshot. I can send it to you. We believe it. He took it down after like ten hours because he realized he can get thrown off the of Twitter. No, he can't. Shuli, what is, dude? What is he taught? Is there a fake Shuli account that tweeted everything there is to know about Howard Stern? Is asked the question. What did Shuli do on that show? And, and, and I just want to ask you this question, and 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 because I really don't know. What truly did on the Stern show? Okay, I mean, I for him, like I want, you know, for him to say that, like he's some kind of part of history. Like he, he thinks he's like, like just like that guy said, you can't even put me in the same sentence as truly. When well, it do comes you see what I have up there right now? So John was the call screener. And the stunt boy <laughs> on the Howard Stern show. John, you were the stunt boy on the Howard Stern show. No, don't get me wrong. Howard Stern, great show. Being the stunt boy on the Howard Stern show, impressive for a stunt boy. But to, for the call screener to be like, Shuli never did anything on the Stern show and I made history is ridiculous. 
And and also, you know, the the classic bits that he's talking about were things that were written for him. Yes. It's not stuff that he did on the fly, uh, in the moment. Um, and, and so, and, you know, let's compare this. How many times did I come into the studio and be called a fucking... John was an intern and a call screener. And then he said he was a writer and he was part of integral part of the crew. And then Howard said... You're a moron, stupid, and you don't do anything but answer the phone, and you can't even do that right. So, John, it's all documented. We have videos on all of this. So you're a liar and a nut, an egomaniac. Idiot. And how many times were you called in the studio and be called a fucking idiot? Um, a lot of my material was on the spot. Uh, yeah, you know, so the, the... what she was trying to say is that he was making jokes and John was the joke. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you were both exactly. part of the same show, but in very different roles. Uh, yeah, that I, show. I, would, I would have a live real time conversation with underdog or big. Howard clearly said, John, you'll never be a stand up comedian. You'll never go anywhere. And uh, you stayed 15 years and complained about salary. You should have left long ago and got real money since you're so famous. Crazy. And all the conniving and sneaky shit you did, getting on wings, talk shows, album, comic books, you tried everything, t-shirts, I would said no, 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 and you did it anyway. Foot for 20 minutes, and then I would bring the best, you know, uh, 80 to 120 seconds of these calls and riff off of that with and make my boss laugh. A lot more than John did. Uh, yeah, I, I, I made Howard Stern laugh uh, several times. Yeah, well, uh, you, don't you, know, you remember uh, that line uh, I had with the thing and then the other thing? Remember when great. I said that Baba Booey has big teeth? Remember that? I was, yeah, everyone man. was laughing. With the shrimp. Howard laughed about John not washing his hands when he goes to the bathroom or <laughs> being in the bathroom for an hour every day, being late for work, being a lazy fucker. In the ocean, remember that? <laughs> it's really incredible to me that that's where John is at now. He's he would accuse me of being a a source for him or a mole uh, that's giving him information, and and I'm like, dude, I got a family. I got these people are looking for people to fire. Like, what are you doing? Like, why why would you fucking say that when you know it's not true? And I don't want to point out the hypocrisy of this. It's not my job to. He's a liar and he doesn't care about people. He has no friends, nothing, no family. So he figures everybody else should be like him. Loser. No nothing. No money. No friends. No life. No family. Kids that want to know from him. Do that, But doesn't John talk about all the lies that people spread about him all the time? Oh, these people are all just lying about me. Like, that's literally what he's doing. I don't lie. I don't <laughs> like, I don't to, like lie. to lie. Yeah, I on. only like to lie twice a month. <laughs> I think I have well, that like, drop on no, my throat I don't, I don't think he thinks this is a lie. He's This is like everything with the people that say, oh, you know, Opie was trashing you on his, on his show. Yeah. And then he does nothing to verify it. Some, some jackass said, I bet. Kevin's wife is cheating on him, and he was like, "Oh, you know, that's just some juicy gossip." I don't <laughs> lie in my. I don't like it. Lie for another day. He's, he's such a fucking asshole. He really is. And uh, he's not done threatening me yet. So let's <laughs> check out some more threats. But yeah, I'm gonna go see Paul McCarty, and then tomorrow I do the McCarty. MSCS show. And what that is guy, MSCS? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. It's Tommy show, and uh, and he's. Do you say Paul McCarty? Not very happy with, uh, you know, with Kevin from, you know, a lot of white podcast. <laughs> I don't think this Kevin guy knows who he fucks with sometimes. Like, you know, like, I, like he fucks with people, but I don't know. I, I got people in New York who, who are not very happy with, uh, you know, uh, yeah, with Kevin. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. just saying, uh, like, uh, at some point, it's going to turn around on him, I think. At some <laughs> point, no, I know the original intent, intent of who are these podcasters. I mean, they... <laughs> uh, I mean, John... <laughs> I, this is the most interesting part of the show because it's about me. But seriously, like Monique, like gave up on interviewing him at this point. Like, this is the shit you want to get into. Like, what do you mean? What's Tommy going to do to him? What, what are you talking about? Why would you follow up? Have some follow up questions on this. He's being insane. Yeah. Why are you a grown man close to his sixties threatening people? What, what is wrong with you? <laughs> All right. So he never least... grew up. He has like he's a stunted. Bur he's sixty in age, but he's still in the sixth grade mentality. 
brain. He has like a stunted 14-year-old's brain. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Is like brain he still... rests in a pool of Coors Light. That's what's well, going on. No, that, that's there. definitely contributing to it. But he has been like this his entire life. Like, with all the, all the content from him that I've seen, he has always just been this petulant child who it fights against the things that he thinks are more powerful than he is. It was Howard. It was it was the other writers on the Jay Leno show. It was the people that wrote on whatever that Stephanie Miller show was. And now it's Carl. And he'll yeah. never take any responsibility for himself because he's a 14-year-old boy stuck in a 60-year-old man's body, substitute teaching in English class while people make fun of him on the fucking internet. And that's hard to do as a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> so you have know, a drinking th problem. <laughs> think about when you were 14, like how sensitive you were and like yeah. how much you tried to craft your image to look cool to the other kids. That is him. Right. Yeah. That's actually a really good observation. And I will say that when I was 14, I didn't know how alcohol worked either. <laughs> <laughs> you mean if I drink it out of a spoon, I'll get drunk, more drunk? Yeah. You know, weird right. shit like that. So I will give Monique credit for this clip. We're almost through this, guys. I know it's been a long segment, but it's too good. You see, like he... And let me ask you a question. Now, again, this is a small... How many people would, would be able to pick Kevin from Why Are These, you know, from a Why Do I podcast out of a lineup? Nobody. Oh, I don't he's know. a nobody, so he's got to he's got to attack somebody who's had way more success than he ever will. Um. Yeah, but you know what? If if you're telling me he's making eight to ten thousand dollars a month, yeah, uh, I really? guess he wins. I mean, you know, so he can well, do whatever know. the fuck I, he I wants I to be. I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about he wins. <laughs> like uh, he, I guess he wins. He's making more than you off of your content. Yeah. I guess he I wins. Like, oh, I'm going to The uh, line doesn't win. He uh, just doesn't lose. Everybody's making more than John off his own content. That's the whole gimmick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the lineup has to be Carl, Carl's brother. Uh, and Doug from Good Times, Great Movies, yeah, all all lined up there, and then also Punxsutawney Phil is there, and you got to look at that lineup and go, which one's Kevin from Why Are These Podcasts? <laughs> I, oh, I love this man. idea. Like John has really latched onto this idea that the reason why we goof on him is not because it makes for amazing content that's been growing our audience steadily for years, but because I'm so jealous of his fame and success. <laughs> Is that what really what you think, John? Is what, that possibly true? How many times do you think he gets stopped a day on the street and says, oh. and somebody goes, are you stuttering John? He says that it happens Zero. five to six times a day. By the way, he doesn't look anything like stuttering John anymore. He doesn't stutter. No. He's trans Over the last three years, we've documented this. He's transformed into a fish. He's transitioning uh -huh. into a gurgler. This maybe, guy is not say toad. <laughs> more of a toad, but all right. Maybe the five or, or six times his face locks up during a stutter. Somebody goes, hey, are you that guy? Yeah. He probably no, he, walks around yelling, what did you do with the money? And they're like, oh, it's stuttering John. Oh, hey. <laughs> he's mistaking all the times that he's leaving the supermarket and someone says, excuse me, sir, are you going to pay for that? As he's trying to wheel out I'll, a cart I'll, just I'll, yeah, full I'll, of I'll sign this receipt. Does Harvey Weinstein win because he's a millionaire? Um, well, his wife does because she divorced him and got all his fucking money, so I go with that. I don't really give a shit about how much money you make. It's about it, it's about who you are as a person. You lie. So he just compared me to Harvey Weinstein? All you care about is money, you prick. Serial rapist? Wow. John, I, I laugh at jerks on the internet. I'm not a serial rapist. <laughs> not I yet. knew it. I mean, I had a feeling. So. John's a serial something. I don't know what. But he's some kind of a pervert wacko. It's just... just Serious, uh, serial hemorrhoid. And, uh, is serial herpes deliverer. I didn't mean I knew it. I meant I had a feeling. <laughs>